Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. In Egyptian art there is a distinct lack of pyramid portrayals, and in pyramids there is a distinct lack of art and inscriptions. I've always found it strange that what I think are the greatest monuments built in human history were not shown in Egyptian art, except for this one votive stela dedicated to the Sphinx god Horon Horomaket, and that's probably only because it has a Canaanite origin. There must be a reason why the Egyptians did not display the pyramid. Is it because the dynastic Egyptians themselves had no idea what they were, or in actual fact, is it because they knew exactly what they were and also what they symbolised? Were the pyramids symbols of ancient sacred and secret wisdom that were not for the masses to understand? The reason this video has come about is because of my recent visit to the British Museum, one granite statue that really caught my attention was this one of Thutmose III of the 18th Dynasty. He is wearing an iconic triangular apron that instantly reminded me of the pyramids. It also reminded me of the black and gold statues of Tutankhamun, which portray him wearing a similar apron, and when looking at the statue in profile, it shows that it sticks out somewhat like a pyramid or half pyramid from the body. In fact, you can find a number of depictions of Egyptian royalty wearing what I'm calling the pyramid apron, and it seems to go all the way back to the Old Kingdom. Were the pyramids therefore always on display in Egyptian art in all eras of dynastic history, but symbols closely associated with the pharaoh? In the famous Egyptian two-dimensional art, the pyramid apron is displayed as a triangle, not how we see it in profile on the statue of King Tutankhamun, which I believe means it is meant to stand out. It was symbolic. It's actually quite difficult to find out about this item of clothing, but a little digging unsurprisingly leads you into Masonic literature. According to Sarah Belzoni, the wife of the famous explorer Giovanni Belzoni in the early 19th century, the royal Egyptian triangular apron is Masonic, astronomical and emblematic. Here we see the Egyptian royal apron from the tomb of Seti I, and it has the sun emblazoned in the corner, spreading its rays of divine heat and light. She believed the triangular apron was the royal order of the pyramid, to commemorate the occasion for their construction. But the pyramid apron was never worn alone, and Sarah Belzoni said that a second serpent apron was worn over the top, and when the two aprons are worn together, we can see the serpents facing the sun. She says that the serpent apron is emblematic of the ruling royal dynasty and a symbol of the fall of humanity. What she calls the apron of the serpents was worn by itself on state affairs for the pharaoh, but the two were worn together only on grand masonic meetings of the hierarchy, whose lodge was in the sacred recesses of a royal tomb, possibly the tomb the pharaoh was due to be buried in, and at times possibly the great pyramid itself. The great pyramid, and especially the king's chamber and empty sarcophagus, have long been thought to be a possible initiation chamber, an idea discussed by a number of historians and antiquarians. In fact, some believe that the Greek historian Herodotus was initiated into a sacred school inside the Great Pyramid, and some also believe that the story of Khufu and the Great Pyramid as a tomb is a fraudulent story to conceal the true origin and purpose of this great ancient monument. In fact, you can argue that there is secret wisdom encoded into many ancient Egyptian temples and tombs, and one such tomb was discovered by Giovanni Belzoni. His major find is what he called the Tomb of Pharaoh Usiri, which is in fact the tomb of Seti I of the 19th dynasty. After the death of Giovanni Belzoni, his wife Sarah states that this incredible tomb is in fact a Masonic temple, a structure dedicated to the Masonic mysteries, and in the words of Sarah, it is blended and united with emblems of discoveries, inventions and sciences in general, progressively as they took place from creation, from which originated the many fabulous inventions that mythology teems with. She says that the tomb of Seti I shows the pharaoh going through the ceremonies of initiation into the sublime mysteries of masonry. The hieroglyphs and imagery show three distinct epochs in the king's life. First, on his accession to the kingdom, we see him going through certain ceremonies and receiving instructions from the hierarchy in the sciences and secret art. Having passed his inauguration, the young king is established, wise in the secret and sacred knowledge and wisdom of the Order of the Pyramid. Apparently, after learning all of the mystic sciences, the king passes to the Masonic Hall of Beauties, accompanied by the Masonic Order, to receive the last and highest grade in masonry, the Masonic Key, which is symbolised with the Ankh or Key of Life. 
Here, the king is invested with the pyramid apron. Over the years I've had a passing interest in Masonic history and symbolism, especially after reading the fabulous book by Graham Hancock and Robert Boval titled Talisman. But I'm not a Freemason, and my knowledge is very limited, so I can't pretend to know a great deal about such things. But I have no doubt that ancient Egyptian royalty were initiated into a mystery cult for learning sacred knowledge, and I have read that modern day Freemasonry has its origins in ancient Egyptian teachings, teachings that have been handed down to the initiated from generation to generation from time immemorial. Maybe the Great Pyramid of Egypt is so mysterious because those of us that are looking for truth are not meant to know. The true knowledge of the pyramids may well have been an oral tradition passed down through the Egyptian hierarchy, aka those that wore the pyramid apron in history. As well as more spiritual wisdom, such knowledge could have included alchemy, techniques of cutting and moving stone, the function of the pyramids, of who built them and when. I feel that exploring the mystery schools of ancient Egypt is a rabbit hole of information that's probably hard to understand without any formal teaching. When Belzoni, who was a Freemason himself, discovered the tomb of Seti I, he noted that the quality of the war reliefs were the most sophisticated in the Valley of the Kings. War paintings were in excellent condition for their age, and his assistant, Alessandro Ricci, meticulously copied them down. The Grand Sarcophagus of Seti I was purchased by prominent British Freemason Sir John Soane in 1824, and according to Belzoni, the sarcophagus merits the most particular attention, not having its equal in the world and being such as we had no idea could exist. The sarcophagus still resides in the Sir John Stone Museum in London, and can be viewed by the public. As a Freemason himself, Belzoni understood the customs of the order, but after studying the material from the tomb of Seti I, it was his wife that states that the Masonic institutions of the day in the early 19th century were similar, if not identical, to ones that existed thousands of years ago in ancient Egypt. Whether or not her husband Giovanni, a prominent Freemason himself, agreed with his wife's interpretation of the tomb of Seti I, we'll never know, but she clearly states that modern Freemasonry had its prototype in the Masonic Temple of Seti I and Ramesses II, where applicants were initiated as they are now, that being in the early 19th century. As detailed in the Obelisk in Freemasonry by John Weiss in 1880, he states that throughout the 13 highly decorated mystery chambers in the tomb of Seti I are nine different initiations, all the same as the ones used by present day Freemasons. The cover story to the masses, looking at this and probably all ancient Egyptian tombs, is that they are merely homage to the gods, portraying ancient Egyptian funerary rites, but Belzoni knew what he had discovered and what he was really looking at. As stated by John Weiss, and I quote, The attitudes, eyes and faces of the individuals, the signs, emblems and symbols around them, indicate anything but religion or devotion. There is nothing humble, devotional or prayerful in their countenances or in their postures. The four or five initiatory groupings in the preceding ninth and tenth mystery chambers seem to indicate no religion. The last one, where the candidate comes before the Grand Master with raised hands, is so well known to Masons that it needs no explanation. Many years ago I read a book called The Jesus Mysteries by Timothy Freck and Peter Gandhi, which states that religions have different levels of knowledge and understanding. There is the literalist view, where the uninitiated believe the literal words of the religious books as gospel truth, and there is the esoteric or mystical understanding where the initiated learn that the events are not literal but actually are symbolic and they teach ancient wisdom. Maybe the characters, gods and teachings of ancient Egyptian religion were exactly that. The masses today believe the Egyptian pharaohs worship Thoth, Horus, Osiris etc, but when you lift the veil, maybe the truth is that these characters are all symbolic, used in initiations and teachings, and the true knowledge of ancient Egypt was known only to the wearers of the pyramid aprons. Most researchers quash Sarah Belzoni's interpretation of the tomb of Seti I, but I do think it is a subject that deserves a second look, and I hope to bring you more on this in future videos. I've just launched a new YouTube channel called Space and Planet, which looks at Earth and space science news, as well as independent scientific research from around the world. Please subscribe now to get my new channel a head start, I've placed a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.